The story is about a teacher helping troubled students express themselves and succeed. The movie Freedom Writers is based on true events Aaron Gruel, a teacher, works with at-risk students at Woodrow Wilson High School in Long Beach, California. The school was formerly well-regarded, but its standards have fallen as a result of forced voluntary integration. Racial tensions have risen since the riots in Los Angeles two years ago. Aaron is excited to teach on her first day. She goes to school wearing red. She waits in the classroom for her students to come. When they do, they begin speaking among themselves, ignoring her. Aaron attempts to begin the lecture, but the pupils aren't paying attention. Soon, two lads in the class start bickering, which rapidly escalates. Aaron is unable to calm them down, so she goes outside in search of someone to assist in separating them. During lunch break, Aaron observes that the school is divided into different groups, each with its own rivalries. Despite this, she works to instill respect in the pupils. They continue to be disruptive in class, despite her attempts. A few days later, a Hispanic student named Eva Benitez sneaks her boyfriend, Paco, and his gang members into school. When the alarm clock sounds, signifying the end of a class session, numerous kids rush out and begin fighting on the school grounds. Erin can only watch as things become worse, feeling powerless. She returns home that evening distraught and confides in her husband, Scott. She's especially concerned because her father is already against her teaching at-risk pupils, and she hopes he hasn't heard the news. One night, Eva enters a convenience store while Paco and two other friends wait in the car. At the same time, her classmate and rival, Cindy Inger, a Cambodian refugee, walks into the store with her two friends. Inside the store, Grant Rice, an African-American student, is playing an arcade game. He feels furious after losing and wants a refund from the business owner. However, this enrages the owner, who demands Grant leave the business. Paco draws a revolver and points it at Grant as he departs wanting vengeance for a prior battle in which Grant defeated him. He pulls the trigger, but his aim is incorrect, and he unintentionally shoots and kills one of Cindy's friends. After fleeing the scene, Grant is captured for homicide. Eva, who observed the incident, is summoned to testify in court. To safeguard her own group and shield her boyfriend, she pins the blame on Grant, falsely pointing him out as the shooter. To make fun of a classmate called Jamal, a kid named Tito creates a racist drawing and distributes it to his peers the following day at school. Aaron takes advantage of this to educate kids about the Holocaust. None of the students appear to be familiar with it, though. Throughout their conversation, Eva expresses her hatred for white people, saying they don't respect other people's cultures and demand respect without cause. Aaron steps in, stressing the value of showing respect before anticipating it in return. Eva claims that white people will stop at nothing to maintain their pride. She recounts witnessing white cops shooting her friend in the back for reaching into his pocket and seeing white officers break into her house and arrest her father for no reason. Marcus, another student, adds that they are willing to die for their own tribe since, even in death, they can maintain their dignity. After hearing these stories, Aaron attempts to dispel their preconceptions by emphasizing that, regardless of their history or behavior, they will be buried and forgotten after death. She recognizes that an existential crisis will not help the kids' attitudes. Following class, Aaron approaches Margaret Campbell, the department chair, and seeks novels that the students can identify with. Margaret, however, refuses, worried that the pupils may damage or lose the books. Furthermore, the school lacks the budget to purchase new books every semester. Instead, Margaret advises Aaron to focus on teaching discipline and obedience. Unable to persuade her, Aaron seeks advice from Brian, another faculty member. Unfortunately, Brian agrees with Margaret's position and believes that integration is a charade. He contends that those who are eager to learn should not suffer as a result of those who are unwilling or shouldn't be studying at all. Despite this setback, Erin is still motivated to reform her students. To accomplish this, she introduces them to a game called The Line Game. In this game, she asks questions and directs pupils to line up if they have been in certain scenarios. Starting with basic questions like their music preferences, she gradually moves to more serious topics. When she asks how many people have lost friends as a result of intertribal fights, all of the pupils stand up, realizing the seriousness of their conduct. In addition to the game, Erin gives notebooks for the pupils to write in. She examines their entries after class, learning heartbreaking stories of eviction, abuse, and loss. These findings have had a significant impact on her, driving her to take action. 
Aaron decides to work two part-time jobs, as a hotel concierge and a department storekeeper, to help pay the students' extracurricular activities. She also appeals to Dr. Khan, the school director, to intervene and persuade Margaret to give her a chance. Aaron's spouse is disappointed as she spends an increasing amount of time at school. He communicates his dissatisfaction, feeling excluded from the decision-making process for her new positions. He doesn't understand why she's taking on more work to fund another employment. Aaron assures him that it is only temporary and that they will return to their usual lives once her students' grades improve. One day, Aaron gets permission to accompany her pupils on a field trip to the Museum of Tolerance. They learn about the history of the Holocaust and address topics such as bullying and hate crimes. After a full day of exploration, Aaron treats them to dinner at the restaurant where she works. She surprises them by inviting several Jewish Holocaust survivors to share their experiences with the students. These initiatives progressively modify the pupils' mindset, allowing them to see that rivalry based merely on skin color should not hinder them from developing friendships. Despite her triumphs, Erin's unusual teaching methods are derided by her colleagues and the department head. The next school year arrives, and Erin returns to teach the same class for the second time. On the first day, she asks her pupils to propose a toast for change, allowing them to express their problems and goals for personal progress. This exercise fosters deeper connections among the students, strengthening their friendships. In the following days, Erin provides them with a book about and Frank, hoping they can relate to it. When students start reading, they begin to learn. And Frank, a German-born Jewish girl, kept a diary detailing her life in hiding during Nazi persecution. Students also learn about Miep Gies, a brave woman who helped in Frank, her family, and other Dutch Jews hide from the Nazis throughout the war. When the children find that Miep Gies is still alive, they encourage Aaron to bring her to their school and tell her story. Despite concerns about Miep's age and the cost of transporting her to the United States, the students insist and offer to raise the monies themselves. Starting the next day, they organize various fundraising activities, including beach food stalls, dance programs, and other events. They swiftly raise the necessary monies through their collaborative efforts. Meanwhile, Aaron works feverishly to contact Meep Geese and invites her as an honored guest. The awaited day arrives, and Meep Geese honors the school with her visit, giving great joy to the pupils. Marcus leads her to the hall, where she discusses her wartime memories with the students. She describes fighting the Nazis with bravery, even when threatened at gunpoint. Marcus, moved by her narrative, names her his hero, but she politely declines, claiming she was merely doing what was right. Meep Geese encourages the students, telling them they are all heroes and that even small acts can illuminate darkness. Marcus is moved by her remarks and chooses to confront his past, explaining that he abandoned his mother to join a violent gang. Recognizing his error, he returns home and apologizes to his mother, professing a desire to improve. Meanwhile, as Grant's trial approaches, Eva's mother inquires as to if she is prepared to testify in court. Eva is torn between telling the truth and protecting her clan by testifying falsely. Ultimately, at the trial, she listens to her heart and surprises the audience by revealing that Paco, not Grant, murdered Cindy's buddy. With this testimony, the innocent Grant is spared, while Paco is found guilty. However, Eva's actions have immediate consequences. The next day, she's attacked by her own group members who threaten her. Fortunately, she is safe because of her father's services to the tribe. Eva seeks refuge with her aunt following the incident. Meanwhile, Erin gets home to find Scott packing his bags for departure. Despite devoted all of her time to her students, she seemed to have ignored her personal life. While Scott admires her admirable work, he confesses his loneliness and bids her farewell, leaving her heartbroken. Back at school, Erin reminds her students that they will soon be promoted to junior year, but she admits that she will not be teaching them. The pupils are disappointed and say they need her. Erin attempts to appeal to the department head, principal, and Dr. Khan, but Margaret opposes the idea, citing more experienced teachers. Despite the setback, Erin urges her kids to strive for excellence. She sets them a final project, write their diaries in book form, inspired by and Frank's diary. Aaron feels these youngsters are no longer just children, but authors with their own voices and stories. She combines their entries into the book, The Freedom Writer's Diary. The next day, Aaron is summoned to another meeting of the school board. At the end of the conference, the chairman grants her permission to teach her students in their junior and senior years. Aaron rushes to inform her delighted students. The movie ends with Aaron successfully helping many students graduate and go to college. Don't forget to subscribe, 
turn on notifications, and like the video. Thanks for watching.